Well, hello and uh, welcome to the webinar. My name is James Timmons and I will be instructing you for today's session. And today, uh, what we're going to be doing here is digitizing a design for beginners. So if you're new to the Wilcom, new to digitizing, now hopefully uh, you can learn something today uh, from um, this webinar. You should be able to see my screen also as well as able to hear my voice. If you can't, in the chat session there, there's a number that you can dial for webinar support. Okay, and I do thank you for joining me today. This design, when we talk about digitizing and we, the type of designs that you get from uh, your customers or um, if you're creating graphics yourself, which is actually a gold mine, if you could do the graphics and do the digitizing is great. Or if you have a graphic artist, you know, there's a big difference between creating a vectorized image and seeing uh, something like this uh, that we have on the screen here. Okay. And this particular lesson here today basically is uh, we, we, we were sent a design. Part of this design with the balloons here, bitmaps. How do I know that? Because as I zoom in closer, you see what happens. This is what you call raster graphics. And this is the worst kind because this kind was actually taken from the web. Okay. And so the closer that you zoom in, the more difficult it is to see. And they also sent a vector graphic here with this text here also. If I zoom into this, I'm going to continue to see crisp lines here for the event. Vectorized image, and that's what you're looking at uh, right now. Inside your color object list, with vector images, this is the Okay. And when you on the screen, you see all the different connections here. Well, this is what you're going to see here with the uh, vector image. Okay. This image here is a bitmap. Files. And um, I'm giving a note here that the the audio is going in and out. Okay, should be able to hear me again now. Um, so as we can continue with this, uh, so this is the view here that you'll see for the objects in the color object list. Okay. And so you'll know that these are bitmap images. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the with the audio today, guys. Let's see here. Okay, we'll move on with this. Hope that will it will stabilize. So right now, uh, what I want to show you here is I want to show you what this looks like if we were going to do an automatic conversion on this first. I want to do the automatic conversion because with the automatic conversion, it will show you what the system will automatically do. And it's good to be able to see this. I use this all the time, even, even now just to see what the system, how the system is going to break down the stitches. And I do it just clearly for a kind of research and just to see what it's going to do because I learn from that as well. So let's do this. Uh, I want to, and I did duplicate this 
if you right click on an object and move it over, hold it down, it'll do a duplication of it. That's what I did with this. So I'm gonna I'm gonna navigate here up top here. We're gonna go to Corel Draw for a moment. And all I wanna do is just convert these two uh, images here. Now, as I navigate up top, I'll select and I'll choose to fit so that I can see everything. So now, so these are two objects here. These are already vectorized. Note the difference up top here. Once I choose a vectorized object, I don't get trace bitmap up here because this is already vectorized and it's actually ready to be converted into stitches. But this one is not here. And because it's not, because it's a bitmap or a raster image, you're going to get a trace bitmap here. So it has to convert this to a vector object before we can actually convert it to stitches. I'll click my down arrow here and I'll choose, I want to do an outline trace on this. What I use almost 99.9% .9 of the time is clip art because it does simplify the coloring and the shapes better than the rest of these items here. So I'm going to click clip art here and it's going to take us to our power trace mode. And this is what shows the original image and it shows the finished image. And as you can see, because, because the artwork was terrible in the first place, whenever you do a conversion from that bad artwork, you're going to get something that looks like this. So that's why it's absolutely so important to use vector art if you can get it. I use the best type of um, graphics to help you move quicker. I'm just going to click OK here too. And I want to select both of these now. And I just want to choose convert. Let's see what this looks like. This is with the auto conversion. And with the auto conversion, wow. Now, this will show you visually right now. These letters don't look bad. Wow, they don't look bad at all. Now, the reason because of this is because those outlines those uh, graphics were already vectorized that played a big role in the finished stitching of this uh of this stitch so uh, this uh, stitching on the screen here but just because the artwork was very nice this one nightmare on embroidery street okay or you can use as the bob and turns this is turning in a very very bad situation here with the with the, with the design here and with the auto conversion because the auto conversion can only convert items that it could see clearly. Just like if you're looking at something, if it's with a blur, you can imagine the software is looking at that bad art with the same type of uh, uh, viewing. So with this, and because we can't send this, we can't send this to our customer. This is uh, it's awful. But at least we did learn something though. We learned that the text did come out all right. We'll go in and, and make sure that we edit this correctly. But this looks pretty good here from my standpoint, okay? But that this here is a wash. It's not gonna work. And it also stitched in the lower left corner, there's 24,160 stitches in that design, okay? So we're gonna have to go in and adjust this. And right now, when you're digitizing, you know, I, and I always tell people that um, when it comes to embroidery, uh, you know, it's so simple that it's complicated. And when I say that, I mean that we tend to, we tend to overthink. And the only thing that we that's really, really important is understanding the embroidery machine and how the embroidery machine runs, what it can do and what it cannot do. OK, and this. Is not working so i'm going to show in i'm going to go i'm going to go in here and i'm going to show you uh, how to correctly digitize this in in my in as far as my opinion okay I'll, i've always tell you that digitizing is an opinion okay and with this i'm just going to go in and i'm going to show you how to do this now looking at this we know that we can use the lettering here from this one on the bottom here okay so that that's that's fine and I'm also going to navigate up top here also, and I want to make sure that I save as my EMB file. Save that. 
All right, so now I'm gonna zoom in here to these balloons. Now these balloons, I'm gonna press K here to lock those on the screen here also. So right now, this is the issue. How do we go in and do something like this? Now, with when you're digitizing also, uh, what's, what's really cool is that uh, just like a painting, uh, you're digitizing, you have three different locations for the digitizing on the canvas. You have a background, you have a middle ground, and you have a foreground. And those are the three dimensions that we're working in here in order to create depth perception with the design. Okay, just like you would see it in real life. It's pretty much how it should be digitized as far as order of things. We're not gonna do any blending stitches here because that's that's another class. Uh, we're just gonna do just straight fills here with these balloons and the order in which they should be digitized in in order to maximize uh, the, uh, the visual aspect of the uh, embroidery to make it literally jump off the uh, off the garment, if you will. So at this point, and as you're looking at this and looking at anything that you're that you're trying to digitize, same as with lettering. If you're digitizing lettering, uh, the you would actually digitize it the same way that you would write it. If I know that I'm going to draw a P, and I'm going to do a line like this, and I'm going to go in and do this one next. Okay. That's the order in which I'm going to digitize it. Okay. And so once I go in, um, so if you're using, no matter what you're using here, if you're using the digitize column here for this, I could just select that here and I would digitize this like I would write it. But here I'm using stitches. Okay. So when I make my mark all the way down here, I can't just leave it as one object because this line here is going to actually proceed on top of that. So this is the way that, that I'd have to go in and digitize this here, here, oops, and here and here, like that, and I'll press enter. This so that that completes that particular object. Okay. And the next one, when I go in, of course, I'll digitize this one like this. And I have to leave a little gap there. And that's, that gap is going to ensure that when it, uh, when the object stitches on top of it, it's going to have a gap here. Okay. Last, I'll go in and I can do it this way. Because this is how I would write it. But in stitching, I'm right clicking this. And notice also the stitch angles that I'm using. They, they can go directly by your clock, the hands on your clock. And this is how you should digitize an object. Uh, I'm going to zoom in here. You should digitize it directly straight across from itself, closest point across, just like this, to create this shape. So right now with this, and as I finish this one and two, I can press Enter here, click on my reshape tool, and make my modifications like this. You make the necessary changes. And so this is what this should look like here, um, digitized, okay? And again, you would digitize it like you would write it, okay? And so having said that, click save here. And looking at the balloons here, we will go from the background to the foreground to create this, uh, uh, this this design, okay? And that means that um, we'll have to go from the back to the furthest position here, and we'll start digitizing the balloons, okay? So right now, uh, as I go in, whether I use the digitized close shape or the uh, complex fill stitch, as I select this here and I will choose my color and I'll go in, now I have also overlying objects here as well. So in order for me to get those to stitch from the machine's perspective, I have to overlap this red balloon here and I can start here. Notice how I overlap this. If I right click, just like this, I'm gonna overlap that pink balloon 
I'm going to overlap the yellow balloon like this. And once I press enter, it's going to close my shape. And I'll enter my entry point. And I'll enter my exit point here on the machine. And it goes in and it fills it in this way. Now I'm not, I don't like this stitch angle. So I will navigate here to reshape tool and I will change that stitch angle to something like this. Okay. And if I measure this, this is too wide for a regular satin stitch. I'll click here, I'll choose metric. I'm going to press M to measure. If this exceeds eight millimeters, way over eight millimeters. I have to change the stitch type here to a tatami. Okay. And now we have our tatami stitch. And so that red balloon is now, it's now, it's finished actually. So we can go in. Now at this point here also, it depends on how accurate I want to be with the uh, outlines for this, because if I'm choosing to put this uh, with a, uh, using an outline, I can use an outline for this. But let's just take it the way it is here right now and see um, how this works out for us. So that one's done. I'm going to click save. Okay. I'm going to press S to show the, uh, to hide the stitches. Now, which one's going to be next? Okay. Can't be this one. We know this one's out. These are out also. What's in front of the red balloon? The pink balloon? and the green balloon. So you can start at either position here with this, okay? So I'm gonna navigate. This time I'll choose my complex fail stitch here. Now when I go in and I'm gonna change the color here too to green. So there's a color change. So I'll start this here and I'm gonna right click. Notice how sometimes the graphic is, is, is incorrect. You have to go in and create the proper um, lines here to fix that. If you make a mistake, you just press your backspace key, like here, there, right click, left click here for a line. Again, in here, I'm gonna overlap this orange balloon. And again, I'm gonna overlap here, the yellow balloon, because you don't want to see the fabric after the stitch is out here. So with this, I'll choose my entry point. I'll choose my exit point. I will choose a different stitch angle for this because this again it's selecting with the, the satin stitch here. We want to use the Tommy. And I don't want to use that. We're using straight fills here. So as I use my reshape tool, I want this to be on the polar opposite end of my starting position. So I use my starting point here and I'm going to adjust my stitch angle like this. Okay. So if I click on the uh, select tool here, as I look at this, these two, they look different because the stitch angles are in totally different um, positions here. And that's what makes this look unique here. Now, if I were gonna set this object here with the same stitch angle as this one, I can select the stitch angle here. I can go down to effects here and choose special. It'll tell me what angle this is, 24 degrees. So watch what happens here to this separation when I make this 24 degrees, 24, and press enter. So what happens now with this is kind of running into the same uh, stitching here, uh, texture here on the shirt as it's going in and stitching it here. And I'm going to undo this. This totally changes the appearance of it here, okay, to the point to where, you know, if I, I can choose to use an outline for this or I can choose not to use an outline because I know that these two objects will be stitching in two totally different stitch angles, okay. And that's how I'll go in and assume everything else. As I continue with this, okay, I'm gonna press S to hide the stitches. And this time I'm gonna choose color number 15 and I'll choose the tatami here. And I'll start here. As I right click here for my curve points, you see here. Again, the overlap, this is something that you'll always do when you're creating uh, objects that are, going, that are stitching on top of other objects. Here's my entry point. Here's my stitch angle.
now what I want, I want you to see something here. And you see, here's the, here's what I just digitized. Okay. And, but why is it not showing? The first place that I would go to is the color object list. As I go here, here's my object. But look how many stitches, zero stitches. So I must have done something to make this happen. Okay. If I click on the reshape tool here, that didn't fix it either. So this is what this is what happened whenever something like this comes about is if you go in normally the the process in which you digitize an object I'm going to move this out this is the correct way that this should, this should have been done here as I choose my object here and I choose my tatami stitch once I go in and you digitize a complex fill like this. Once you get, you don't have to end where you started because it's a closed shape feature inside the software. So in order to close this shape now and tell the software that I'm ready to quit, I'll press enter for the first time. Okay. On my lower left corner of my screen, it's asking me for a boundary two. Boundary two will always be a donut hole. We don't have a donut hole here. So the second thing that I'll need to do is press enter a second time to tell it that I do not have a donut hole as I press my enter key for the second time. Now the system in the lower left corner, my prompt bar is asking me to enter my entry point. So I'll enter my entry point here and I'll enter my exit point there and I'll give it this time my stitch angle like this. And now when I press S, it fills it in perfectly, okay? So what did I do on this first item here to cause it to not stitch out? And whenever you see this, the first thing to do is go to your color object list and to see if there's a zero stitch count right there, because that's gonna signal that there's a problem, okay? And so what usually happens is this, if I click on uh, the fill stitch here, and let's say I'm gonna do a shape, and I'm first gonna press enter, Okay, it's asking me for boundary two. Okay, maybe I made a mistake by uh, clicking, um, let's say that I forgot that, and I go automatically to the third step. Okay, so as I go in, maybe I'll start digitizing something else. As I press enter, and now as I press enter again, and I enter my entry point, for this, and I enter my exit point, and I do my stitch angle for this. It does that, okay? So what has happened here, this is, the, this is actually boundary two, which should be the hole for this object here, but it's in the wrong location, okay? Watch what happens when I grab this, and I have to do it from reshape mode. As I select this and move this into the inside, watch what happens, it does that because I incidentally digitized the shape outside of that particular object here on the screen. And that's what happens when you see that zero stitch here, if it's ever happened to you before, okay? And so having said that, so whenever that happens to you, um, that's what happens if I select this. And if I choose here, the add holes fill, Or you know what? If I choose it here, it's asking me to put a hole in it. Okay. Now, if I put a hole in it here, let's see if this generates the stitches for it. Nope, still doesn't work. Okay. So just, I wanted to show you that to show you what happens if you ever run across that when you're digitizing. I'm gonna click save here. As we continue with this design, I'll press S here. So here again, everything everything that's in front of the balloons here, which is the orange, the yellow balloon here. So at this point, I will go in, I'll choose my yellow, choose my tatami stitch here, and I'll digitize the yellow balloon. 
I'll start here. Here, overlapping, right clicking here. And I'm just doing this curve here, overlapping these objects here. And I'm going to press enter to tell the software that I've stopped boundary one. Um, I don't want a boundary two, so I'll press enter a second time. Not once, a entry point for me here. And I'll choose my entry point here and here. And I'll do a slight angle on this one. I'll press S. This is what it looks like. OK, stitch angles, totally different stitch angles for each one of these. And it's giving it depth perception. When the light hits it, it confirms it. OK. As we continue with this, we have the color orange. It's going to go in and digitize this balloon. And on this one, this one has a little section here on the outside of it. I want to make that larger, like this. OK. And now I'll go in. I'll right click this, press Enter again. I'm doing exactly the same thing. And my entry point, and my exit point, and my stitch angle. This is what it looks like. OK. Save. Can't do the red one yet. Not ready for the red one, because the red one's in front. Here, right click. You just outlining that object. Like you see here, this. Enter. I have my entry point and my exit point, and here is my stitch angle. If I go to my reshape tool here, because you don't you don't want this over you don't want this to be overkill for your over uh, overlap here. This is what it looks like. Okay. Last but not least, as I press S here to hide the stitches, oops, and um, we'll choose a different um, color for this one. Now here, again, on the bottom of this, now another option that I have for this also, now, and let me back up here also, we missed something here. We missed the little string here on the orange balloon. OK, and because that is in the background here of the front of this little object here in the front there, I'll need to go in and set this up if I want to use a double run stitch for this. So I would go in and start this here. As I'm right clicking this, like this. And I want this to be underneath uh, the orange. So when I go in, I want to, whatever stitching before the orange. So if the yellow stitched, I want to go in and run here. And select this one, and then I'm going to select the orange balloon. I'm going to navigate here to my one, two, three, four, my sequence, and I'll collect, select here and change the color of this. And where this stops, as I choose my reshape tool, this is where the next stitch starts stitching here, and it goes out to my exit point here. So we have that done. Okay. Another way uh, that um, that I could have done this is I could have gone in and done a satin stitch for this one. OK, but I'm going to go in. I'll choose my color first this time. And I'll start here again. As I'm going in and digitizing this running stitch, as I press Enter, 
Okay. Now, for this stitch here, notice here that it started here, but it exited here also. And that's not what I wanted for this. I wanted this to do a double run. I wanted it to go back to where it um, to where it started. So I have two options with the uh, with the designing package. I can select this object. I can navigate here. This is my backtrack tool. Okay. Also, I want you to take a look here at object number 313. I'll need two of those to create a double run stitch. So I'll navigate once this is selected. I'll click my backtrack tool. It adds that backtrack tool here. And if I go in it to my reshape tool now, it's, it's starting here on the outside and it's going back to the inside. So I have my double run stitch here for that. And that's accurate. And that, so that's the way that, it, that this should stitch. Okay. If you have, I'll do a quick clone of this. If you have, decorating and you, you want to do that double run stitch so if i go out here if i want this to go back here i could just select this here i can do a control d to duplicate okay control d it's going to duplicate that and now when i go back here to my reshape tool i'll just resequence that it does the same thing, okay, by going in and doing the double run stitch, okay? All right, go to this here. And so right now for this one, I'll just go in, I'll do my backtrack, do the double run stitch, okay? And I can go in at this point here now. And again, this area here, I want to make that larger so that I can see this because if I press the number one key, the number one key shows me the one-to-one -one view of this. And I want to be able to see this so it needs to be large enough so when I stitch it, it doesn't punch a hole in my fabric. Okay. And some some may go in and some may say, you know what, I want to use a, a satin stitch for this. And they may do a satin stitch for this, like this. Okay, and they may, they may want to do a satin stitch for this, and now they can do the tatami stitch fill for this. As they go in, start digitizing like this, right clicking. You're doing your overlaps here to cover everything so that uh, when it stitches out, you're not seeing the fabric through the stitches like this. Here, as I press enter, enter again entry point, exit point, angle, like this. And it's just optional, whether you decided to do it this way or that way, you know, that depends on the digitizer. It's not right or wrong, okay? But this is how this is gonna stitch out. Now, with this, with this completed, I wanna now go in and I wanna run the stitch player on this because I want to make sure that everything is stitching correctly. Okay, so I'm going to click save here first. I'm going to navigate up top here. I'm going to hide the bitmap images and I'm going to hide the vector images here. So I just want to go in right now as I'm looking at this and I want to see how this is going to stitch out. The stitch player is something that you should always run before you do your stitch outs. Okay. And you can go in and adjust your outlines and your spacing if you need to. But I'm going to go here and I'll choose the stitch player. I'm going to jump up here to the next object to where it starts stitching the first balloon. And with the stitch player, it's crucial because what is it? What is this telling you already? Okay, just by seeing this stitch out, I'm, what, what is this showing you here already? Something that needs to be something that needs to be fixed ASAP.
or if it's not fixed, what's going to happen is it's going to it's going to it's going to crinkle up, and um, when, once they put that in the dryer, you're not going to be happy. There are no underlay stitches, correct, Brenda? And Lisa, correct? No underlay stitches. Okay, and that means this it's going to it's going to shrivel up because there's no foundation stitch that's going down uh, to lay the fabric flat. So how do we fix that? Well, we can fix them all at the same time. And I'm just gonna go in, I'll select all of the tatami stitches. How do I do them all at once? You just navigate to your edit drop menu like this. You scroll down to, you're gonna select by stitch type. And you wanna choose tatami. And you're going to click OK. It's going to select all the tatami stitches from your list. Now I can go to my underlay stitch tab in my object properties. And for tatami stitches, it's customary. You can have an edge run underlay stitch first to seal the borders. And then you're going to have tatami here as a secondary underlay stitch. Now, this is just stitching normally. If this is going to stitch on uh, a towel, anything terry cloth, I would have to use the double tatami stitch because you need more underlay because that stable is that the fabric is unstable. So the, the more unstable the fabric, the more underlay that you need for your. All right, that's done. So now when I go back and I look at this again, when I do my stitch player, now I've got some underlay stitch going now. Okay, and this is then this is what needed to be done because it, there was going to be a problem, major problem. The stretch of the garment usually goes from you can either pull it from left to right or vertically. And the stitch angles that I use, I try to never use a 90 degree or a zero degree stitch angle because if the garment happens to be going in that stitch direction, you might have some extended pull on it. So I try to use anything, a 45 degree is always safe. But for this one here, because we had multiple objects to um, stitch here, I went in and I just adjusted the stitch angles uh, and I, because I wanted them to look different. I did not want um, two balloons to look the same. And as it goes in, as the light hits it, it creates depth perception. I'll speed this up. At least now I'm happy to know that I've got the correct amount of under, underlay here for this uh, Tommy stitch, which is crucial. And as it goes in, it's going to stitch these. And I'm sure that when it stitches these out, I'm not going to have a gap anywhere on this because I went in and I overlapped them. And you could do that one, two millimeters, you know, depending on you know, the stretch on the garment here, but something like this, it, it should be fine uh, to go in and because you're going to have to overlap because you don't definitely do not want the fabric to show three. And if you don't do it correctly, it will happen. Brenda has a question. Does the underlay stitch adjust an angle to the angle of the top stitches? Yes, it does. Because if you look at these, uh, it's usually going to go in like a 45 degree angle. And that could be changed also inside your properties. Like right now, um, I could go in and I could set this up because right now, uh, that angle there, as you can see, is going in a 45 degree angle of the top fill. And that's important because that stabilizes the fabric in that particular direction before the top stitches go up. Now, what you could do here also is, um, We know this is going to stitch all the way through here. So right now, as I zoom in, I'm going to stop this. That hurts my eyes when I see it. So right now, if I press T, take off the true view. So right now, you could right now with the stitch angles here, as they're going in a 45 degree angle, if I go to underlay tab, it shows me here. So you can go in. Here's a stitch angle here. Now with this, 
I can change this and it changes the way it looks. But you gotta be sure that, it not, that it's not going in the same direction as the actual fill is what you have to be very careful of. Okay, I can make it here 45. And you see the top stitches here going in this direction and here 45 degree angle. You can, you can adjust that by going in and doing something like this. Okay, and that's how you would do it actually. And it's great because you wanna have, you wanna have total control. Okay. All right, so now let me select this here. Let me look. I'm gonna undo this. Just wanna make sure. Notice this, the exit point for the fill is in the wrong location here. And when you see this, when you see that triangle and that circle inside the triangle here, it's a trim, okay? So I gotta fix that. So I need to move the starting point for the top fill closer to where the exit point for, this, for the strings were. And it, it removes the triangle, which is the trim from this object here. Okay, I'm gonna choose save here. Take it back here. So now, so we have the uh, balloons here done on the bottom portion of this. Okay, now if I, if I wanted to put a border around this, it would clearly be because of the size of the objects that you're working with on the screen here. Um, we could go in and we could put borders around these. If I'm gonna go in and do a border around something that looks like this with this layout, um, I would have to go in and do the fill stitch first and immediately, and immediately do the border around that object because um, as I spoke yesterday about the number of stitches that generate with the tatami stitch, um, these, it generates approximately 200 stitches per square centimeter. And so in order, in order for me to go in, if I went in and stitched all of these objects first and then tried to go back and do the outline for these, then um, I'm gonna have a problem with registration more than likely, okay? And so for something like this, you know, if I definitely wanted to go in and do the border, uh, and this is a pretty large size design, if I wanted to go in and do a border with this, I could select that object there. I can navigate over to the simple offset tool. I use I'll use my minus 0.10. If I wanted to do a satin stitch for this to column C and click OK, it's going to do that. Okay. But what's happening here also, it did the whole thing. Okay, because when you do that, when you, when you select that object, it's gonna put the, um, it's gonna completely engulf it with the outline, okay? And so if you do it this way, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with this. Um, I, I, try, I use a different method with this. Okay, I'm gonna undo this. I'd much rather have a running stitch around this. I'm gonna select this one first. I'll go back here to my simple offset tool. I'm gonna use a running stitch. Let me show you why. Once I click OK, it's going to put a run around that. If I choose select, it still does the same thing. Okay, it engulfs it totally with the running stitch, but I don't need this on, underneath here. I'm um, covering this up here. And so I can navigate now to my edit tool. And I want to cut this. I'll use my knife. I want to cut it from here to here. I'm going to press enter. In my color object list, I can see where it split this. I don't need the one on the bottom. I'll select that and I'm going to delete it. Okay. Now what I can do is I can select this. I can choose my column C stitch and press 
if I, if I want to make this smaller, 1.5, and press Enter. And when I select it now, you know what? There's no overage. OK. And this is an option here that you can use with this. And this stitch here on the outside here, let's make this 1.2. OK. And as a matter of fact, I want to change the default of the column C stitch by right clicking on it and then going into the object properties and make it two. So now it's going to default to 1.2. And so I would do that again because as this one stitches, it has to stitch this on top of it. Okay. And I can go in with this. And I'll change that to color, change the color of this color here like this. And I can do this for each one of these to, to and you, then again, select it first. This is just a different way of going in and doing this, but I want to be able to control, again, I want to be able to control the stitch. So when I go here, I can knife it. It didn't sound good, did it? Let's say cut it and press enter. And again, color object list. You see the one that you don't need, you just select it. And I'm seeing here also with this, as I choose my reshape tool, see this, this line here is making, is throwing it off. So I'll press enter, make that a curve. And here also, and press enter. Now I can click on this. I can click on my column C stitch and press enter, just like that. Select, I can change my color. So when it stitches that balloon, it goes in and it does the outline just like this. And again, for me, it's, it's, it's totally a control thing for me because I want to be able to, um, any shapes and stuff that need to be adjusted, of course, I'd, I'd adjust those too. But just to show you, as these are stitching here like this, um, the way that I usually do this, kind of a, it's kind of a runaround way to do it, but I do it because, again, I want to control where that uh, stitch is going for that object. And I'll just keep on doing this until they're finished. Okay. Select again, press enter, just like that. Go in now and I could adjust and I can change this color. Okay. It's going to create more color changes, but for the sake of having the registration not being off, it's worth its weight in gold. Same thing here. You just re you repeat. Same thing. Cut. And you'll get to the point to where you know exactly where to do this. And to make sure that you that it's looking the best it can look, to go in again, select, press enter. Select it, and you're going to change your color. I'm going to click save here. And I roll down here. This one was next, actually. And again, uh, I'll click on my reshape tool. Just that. And again, you go back. Same process. Navigate here to select it and you knife it or I mean cut it. Delete the one that you don't need and select it from here. Again, select, you know, the pattern in it because it's going to create a pattern that you'll be using for this uh, same method. Click OK again. Knife tool. Oops, got to select it first. I like the knife tool because it shows you exactly where uh, the cut object line should be. 
and it makes it easier to go in and use that. I like that feature. Select this again. All I'm doing is going back doing the same thing. Okay. Last but not least, now for this one, because I, I did these separately, I'm going to press control and choose this one here also at the bottom. Same thing here. Run. And for this one, I'll just do this for that. Now, the strange thing with these, as far as going in, um, I may have to go in, zoom into this. and move this out like this to outside of what that shape is like this. If I need to open it up a little bit like this, and you can go in and you can, you can adjust this here. If I can select this one, press my shift key down and grab this one and move this over like that to open that up like this. So you, you have different options that you have that you can go in and you could adjust that uh, to get the colorization on that actually. But then it's, see, it looks weird here also because now you got this outline here and you got the uh, string on the balloons. So with this, you know, you're, for something like this, um, you know, it may be better to use a um, a thicker border, uh, something thicker than a running stitch. Okay, like maybe a triple stitch for something like this. And if I select this one here, go to my outlines. If I do triple run, it's gonna look like that. Triple run. This is how you can go in and you can change it. Okay. Here, you select it, you click here, and you just choose a triple run. Triple. And this, when you look at this, it's going to look better for this one. And it's going to match up also with the strings that you see there also. So again, this is another way that you can go in and do something like this, okay? By having them stitched separately. Again, you have more color changes, but it still works. Now, um, I'll press D here. If you wanna do a highlight for something like this, you can do a highlight for something like this by just going in here, I'll choose my ellipse tool. And I'll go in and do something like this and press enter. And this needs to be a different color. Now, when it comes to the highlight for this, I want the highlight to be the same stitch angle. When I select here and go to specialty as 142, I want this to have the same stitch angle. Okay. And for this, because of the size of it here also, um, I want to use the satin stitch with this also. And for something like this, um, because I have a fill underneath this, I can go here to my spacing. I can make that point 50 or I can make that point 60 to open up the density for this. And I don't want an underlay stitch for this, okay? I can go in because I'm using the fill here as an underlay. So when I go here to my underlay stitch here, I have none. I want to make sure that my that I'm stitching from one one side here all the way to this side. I don't want these to be on the same side. They be they should be at opposite ends like this because there's no, there's no underlay stitch with this. Okay, and so because of this, now I can actually go in. I can select this, press S here, right click, right click and drag.
right click and drag right click and drag and right click and drag here so this is now what that looks like okay and i want to go in now notice now i want to choose and i want to make this the same stitch angle as my fill because i do want it to kind of blend a little bit so how do i do that um with the rest of them you right click on the object on the first one you make those properties current but you know what no we're not gonna do it that we'll do it this way um under specials 133 and we'll make this 133 with this one zero six and this one We'll make this six okay because we want it to match up uh, with everything else this one 163 this one also 163 48 degrees select this one we make this also 48 degrees oops hold on 48 This, this fill here, um, I don't like this long length for this. I want it to be shorter as uh, I want it to be the closest distance across. So with this stitch angle here, seven degrees. And I'll make this also seven degrees. See the difference as it goes across there, because I want that I want that to be the same as the other one, so th so that it blends into the uh, complex fill. That's the main purpose of this all. Sixty degrees with this one, sixty degrees, and with this um, here, when I go in and I select this. Again, based on how long this is here, I want this to be closest point connection here. And that'll make that 164, and I'll make the fill 164 to match it. Okay, same thing here, this is 24. If I make this, let me make this, uh, I'll make it 140. 142, 142, okay? So now I've got my stitch angles matching up here. I'm gonna click save. I have those matching up now with, with everything else here. And so next, what I'm gonna do as I continue with this, um, I'm gonna go in, I can get rid of this. I'll press delete. I'm gonna press uh, and turn on the vector to see my party balloons. I'm going to select these and I'm going to group those together. I'm going to press K and I'm just going to select this now and move this down. Okay, but I have to also go in and check it to make sure that it's stitching correctly. And when I select these, I'm gonna to go to my underlays. And for these, I have uh, Now, you see how the underlays here are see when it converted from Corel, you see, I want you to see this. You should never have ever, ever, ever have a by shape underlay here for this small column. Never. This is for a larger fill type like your balloons. And it's going to do the edge run around the whole thing. So we want to change this. And notice 
by this, it would not allow us to do a, a single a single run, a center. It wouldn't let us do it just because it's, this is selected here. So once we choose by segment, now we have access to the center run, okay? And on all of these, as we select these, by segment, it allows you to do individual segments. When I say individual segment, this is one segment, this is a segment, this is a segment, and this is a segment. Okay, so you wanna be able to go in and you wanna be able to choose by segment so that you can tell it um, that you wanna use the center run. If you choose by shape, it won't give you the option to use the center run, and that could be a big mistake, okay? So as I go in, I'll adjust these, making sure that they're in the right location, making sure it is the right, correct underlay for that object here as you're working uh, with the design. Center run, center by segment and center run. Like that. And the order in which it stitches, I'll select the B, I'll press tab. So it's doing it in this order here. Oops. So when it does this one and I press tab, it jumps to the P. So we're gonna have to order these in the right uh, order that we want them to stitch. So I'll go in, I'll choose the B first. I'll press my control key down. I'll click this, two, three. I want this to stitch next, this to stitch next, this one, this one, and then this one, and then the P, and the A, the R, the T, and the Y, and I'll choose one, two, three. It goes in now, it's changing the stitch order. And once I press tab now, it goes in and it changes the stitch order like this. Okay. One, two, three. Making sure that everything is stitching in order. Press tab. There we go. So that is, so, and remember, originally we had, for just from the conversion, it was 24,160 stitches. Let's see how many we have now once we get rid of uh, the bad seed here. <laughs> You ready for this? 10,622 stitches from 24,160 stitches. Okay, huge difference. And when I go to design and run my small stitch filter, which um, I like to make mine five or six here, it's gonna reduce the stitch count even more. So now it's 10,206 stitches, okay? And that is the reason why um, that we, we digitize embroidery designs, okay? Because think about this, if you're, if you're, most people think that, you know, they can pay $10 for, for a very good embroidery design, you get what you pay for, okay? And because a lot of the uh, digitizers, they're usually charging by stitches, okay? Your running stitch, regular from point A to point B is gonna give you uh, 15 stitches per centimeter. You do a double run, 30 stitches. Small column, 50 stitches per centimeter. A really a thicker column stitch, 70 to 120 stitches per centimeter. To Tommy stitch fill, 200 stitches per square centimeter. So if, you're, if you have a digitizer that's ripping you off by putting these to Tommy stitches in places where the satin stitches ought to go, and you're paying ten dollars, you get what you pay for. You can't expect to buy a Pinto and expect the quality of a Rolls Royce. It's not going to happen. Okay, so um, so with this again, just to show you why it's important to have a good digitizer, because in the long run, uh, they're going to make you money in your production. Okay, if you have a design that's poorly digitized, 
and you paid ten dollars for it and you're saying this is i ran for 45 minutes you know a good digitizer you know it's gonna it's gonna make it run 20 minutes so who's getting ripped off okay so and i want you to keep that in mind and digitizers are they're worth a good digitizer and a graphic artist if you got both you have a gold mine and this is how they make you money because you know where to put these stitches and if you learn how to do that you'll be doing exactly the same thing and this looks better than that first one did okay all right um any questions just going to do it for our class today Let's see Allison has a question when using measuring tool do you hold down the M to see the measurement? I don't uh, see the measurement on my screen. Now, if you press M, click here, it's usually going to uh, give you the um, measurement tool. Now, um, there's a possibility also that it may be turned off. You can check that by going to setup, going to options, And in your options tab, make sure that you show measure tool tip. You wanna to make sure that this is checked because if it's not, you won't be able to see it on your screen. Again, setup, options. Scroll down on the left side, show measure tool tip. Make sure that this is selected. Okay, because you should be able to, once you press that and you do your two reference points, it should give you the length here of that object on the screen. That's that's the way it's supposed to work. Okay, very good, awesome. Excellent. Um, so do we have any more questions? Thank you, Brenda, for your kind words. Thank you, Danny. All right, guys, if you have any, um, we got a good um, request yesterday of doing a split front tackle twill on like a baseball jersey. Please send me your requests for if you want me to cover a topic for the classes and you can send that to support at willcomeamerica.com. Attention James, okay. Again, that's uh, support at willcomeamerica, attention James, it'll go to my queue. Uh, you put attention james inside the subject matter there and we also ask that you visit us at www.willcomeamerica.com for inf information on updates um, if you need uh, drivers if you need information on uh, different uh, phases of the uh, will come embroidery studio um, knowledge base uh, different things and so you can get your information there and I uh, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, thank you so much for your patience with me. And I will see you next time. And thank you so much for, uh, for coming today. I really enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And as always, happy digitizing.